Good morning and welcome to worship here at White Oak Pond Christian Church. We're so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning in this virtual sanctuary as we gather for worship. It is um, a beautiful day outside and as we gather here this morning, I um, just want to uh, invite you to look and see what's going on in the life of our congregation right now. First and foremost, Con Pond will continue to have church virtually. Um, as uh, we are beginning the process and have had our um, kind of our safety team looking at moving back to in-person worship. Um, and so right now we're doing our in-person out in the garden at nine o'clock during, um, during our morning prayers. We will continue to have those morning prayers um, at nine o'clock each and every week. If um, when the weather changes or if we have inclement weather, we'll be moving into the fellowship hall and still socially distancing and masking there for our, um, our morning prayers at nine. In the sanctuary, we're um, proceeding on, as, as many of you read in the newsletter, we had some storm damage a little while back and had some of the ceiling come in. And so we'll be getting the roof fixed in um, the week of October the 12th, and then they'll be working to finish up and to fix the inside of the sanctuary after that. So once those uh, repairs are completed, we'll be able to move forward um, with our uh, plans for in worship, in person worship from there. We uh, have many opportunities for service here at White Oak Pond. Um, there are ways that you can serve through hospitality or sharing your gifts with the world. If you are looking for a way to give back, um, to make a difference, um, please give the church a call. We have some ideas and some places that you can, we can connect you with or things to do here at the church. So um, we know that people are busy. We also understand that you want to find a way of serving, making a difference. So give the church a call and we can plug you in um, in some way um, in the next few weeks uh, with a lot of different things. And like I mentioned, the church work um, on the roof is scheduled for October the 12th. Um, we're grateful that the board passed that um, passed that kind of resolution to move forward with um, those repairs in the next few weeks. It is good to welcome everybody here today. So glad that you're a part of us and that you can worship with us. As we begin our worship this morning, um, we're going to invite you to enjoy the music that Laura and um, has continued to provide for us this morning. There is a theme, and we have um, some wonderful folks joining with her from Eastern Kentucky University today, and the music that they share um, is, uh, is beautiful, and we hope that it prepares you for worship this morning. creativity and the ways that she connects with other musicians and for the gift of music. Now our call to worship this morning, we're going to do it just a little bit differently. We need you to join with us and to help as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the first line and then the bolded text that you see on your screen, you all will read where you are. Now this is the great thing, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you get a chance to participate. So. Um, just call it out, talk to the screen, whatever you may need to do, but uh, we will join together in our call to worship this morning, if you would join with me. We come so God can teach us goodness 
and love for each person. We will compete, complete God's love by having the same compassion as God. We come so Jesus can lead us into lives of service and obedience. We will complete Jesus' hopes by putting others before ourselves. We come so the Spirit can help us to empty ourselves for God and those around us. We will complete the Spirit's peace by sharing our lives with others. It is good to be together, be together this morning, and as we um, gather, we will sing together uh, our hymn this morning. It's called More About Jesus I Would Know. There are three verses with a refrain um, in between them, and you'll be able to find the words right there and um, invite you to share this morning in our hymn of praise. we come to that time in our service where we ask the question, where have you seen God this week? It is important to name those things, to to ask those questions, because it is in the seeing of God in the in the day to day operations that we can see that we're moving closer and closer to an understanding of God's world. As we gather, do we have anybody out there who's seen God? Where have you seen God this last week? Yes. All right. Down there in South Carolina. Lana and Jack, go ahead and unmute yourself. Nope, we still can't hear you. You've got to unmute yourself. There Here we go. go. I said, this is a spinach plant, one of many that I've raised from seed, and I watch them every day as I go down and make sure I take care of them. And this little guy's getting ready to go into the planting box out on our deck. Fun. That's terrific. You'll get to see some of our handiwork from the, um, our garden a little bit. Other places where you've seen God this last week. I uh, um, I will say that uh, one of the places that I got to see God is um, while I was at uh, Eugene Bowling's home last night at out back. Uh, we had a memorial service for Virginia. Um, I got a chance to see um, Jane Long, and Jane was hospitalized this last week, and it was so nice to be able to uh, 
to see her and to see her doing better. We continue to, we'll continue to pray for her when we get to that time of prayer, but it was a gift to be able to see her and um, just let her know that we've been thinking about her. Other places where you've seen God this last week. All right. We continue to, um, it continues to move us in a place where we think about, um, about our prayer concerns. Because that is some place that we see God as um, making a difference, and we see God's actions in all kinds of different ways each and every day. As we come to this time in our service where we look at our joys and our concerns for the week, I um, wanted to lift up a couple of things. First off, um, like I mentioned, Jane Long has returned home and is doing better, and so we're grateful for that. And we continue to pray for her, though, as she continues to recover. Carrie Moberly is one in which has been having some health issues. We need to continue to remember Carrie in our prayers, as well as her son, Matthew, um, who has um, doctor's visits and medical issues as well. So we continue to pray for them. Each and every week, we've also prayed for Heidi Franks and for Karen Younger's friend, Jack, who's out in California, who has um, challenges um, with his health out there. We recognize that there are many concerns that we have that are concerns of our world and as of our nation and also as our state and community. We continue to remember our teachers and students that will be heading back to school this next week. Um, we continue to remember our administrators who are doing the best that they can. We're also grateful for so many family members who have stepped up in this time and have helped out um, and in teaching school or you know, kind of keeping people on track or even just trying to, to be the IT specialists that are needed during this time. So um, grateful for the families that have done that and, and for the teachers as well that are preparing for this time coming up. We recognize that, like I said, there are there's things in our world that continue to push us and challenge us. Um, and those are the continued concerns that we have around COVID-19 and the virus that is, um, that is going around. We continue to um, remember those over 200,000 deaths in the United States, people who have passed away. We remember our frontline workers and those who are suffering because they've either dealing with the virus or they are going through um, challenges associated with the economic disaster that's happening at the same time. We continue to ask that we all draw together instead of um, engaging in um, a divisive sense uh, around this um, virus. It's important that we, um, that we continue to do that, um, that we continue to come together in that way. Let's see, um, let's see. We have uh, one that was li uh, lifted up to us. We have um, Kim Billings is having a heart cast tomorrow and um, also remembering um, John Lawrence who um, is, um, dealing with liver um, failure and hospice has been called in. So we'll lift up Kim and also John this week in our prayer concerns. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. So my grandmother uh, is just got home from the hospital yesterday, but she's having some heart issues um, and she's 86. So uh, her name's uh, Jeannie. So Jeannie Moret. Yeah, that's what grandma's name is. Yeah. So, yep. All right. Thank you so much, Je Jeannie Moret. And, and then uh, also, uh, my friend Ashley that had been diagnosed with melanoma, um, she had surgery several weeks ago. They feel confident that they got the spot off of her ear. They did not have to take as much of her ear as they thought they would have to. And the good news is that it has not spread into any of her lymph nodes. So, oh, that's such that's good, good news to hear. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And hope you're doing well with the new well position the new at the position school. At the school. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, Nikki, yes. All right, uh, Nikki, I see yeah. your rate. Yes. Chad, um, one of our kids at school has COVID and she ha she, she doesn't have, well, she was, Diagnosed with COVID on August 26, and as a result of COVID, she's going to have to have a feeding tube put in because she now has developed gastroparesis, and she's only 11, 
and she's like me and she loves food better than life itself so it's really really sad so just pray for her and her family her name's gracie okay. all right definitely remember gracie thank you so much for sharing that we'll definitely remember her um and then uh, uh yeah marcy go ahead um, Chad, I've got a friend, um, and, and the reason I'm not away this weekend is undergoing chemo for, um, for, uh, multiple myeloma. Uh, she's a dear friend. She's a hiking buddy of mine. Um, and her name is Jan Taylor. And I just would like us to keep her in our prayers. She's a one, wonderful, wonderful person. Also, more, or Richard was telling me that he has a friend, Victoria, that is having some surgery this week. Um, so I will we'll ask prayer for her as well. And the third thing would be, um, I guess, our, our country and our political situation. Um, I, I just would love to see um, us all be able to disagree agreeably and continue to love one another. Thank you so much, Marcy. I appreciate that. And uh, that also that, that word as well. Um, I think that one of the things that, that we've continually seen um, throughout our engagement with the prophets over the summer and that especially um, with the uh, situation um, concerning COVID-19 and the racism that is going on in our country and also the political divisiveness that is happening is that there are people out there that are far too eager to divide us to get what they want. And the reality is, is that God is always calling us back in a, in a way of grace and mercy and compassion so that we see the humanness in each and every person. And it is so important that, um, that we not be um, lured away into this way of vilifying um, the other. And um, so uh, thank you so much for mentioning that. And uh, we recognize that, um, that voices are important. Names are important. People are important. And to, um, to diminish one um, group of people over another, um, especially when it comes to um, issues around race is um, is not part of uh, what the kingdom of God looks like. And so um, thank you so much for mentioning that. We'll continue to remember all of these folks that have been lifted up as well. Um, anyone else that we need to add to our list this morning? Okay, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty and compassionate God, as we gather here on this Sunday morning, we recognize that the seasons are beginning to change. There's a little bit more of a chill in the air outside when we awake in the morning. The sun is going down just a little bit earlier at night. The flowers that have been in the pots and the places in our garden are beginning to slow down a little bit. But God, the recognition is is that even through the changing of the season, you are there, always present, always calling out to us by name, drawing us closer and reminding us that you are our God and we are your people. Your presence, O oh Lord, is powerful and it is what we need in this world, in this nation, in this community. Help to always reform and reshape our own views so that we might continually see the humanity of all people, the value of each voice, the beauty of each name. For as we come together on this Sunday, there are so many things that are calling us and, and tempting us to push ourselves apart. But, O oh Lord, you remind us that together we can do amazing things. We're so grateful for those teachers and those administrators that are working so hard to welcome back each and every named child. So grateful for each teacher 
that continues to show that these children are important and that learning is something that should become part of who they are for the ways that they challenge and nurture and the ways that they do it in such creative and still different ways today. We're praying for those students that are on our hearts, those that we know that have slipped through the cracks and that are going through difficult times at home. And we're also praying for students like Gracie, who that in the midst of all of this are dealing with new challenges, with diagnoses and, and treatments that are painful and hard. God, there are so many that are on our hearts and minds today, but we say their names. We say the names of Jane and Carrie and Matthew and Heidi and Jack, Victoria and Jan, Gracie and John and Kim, Ashley and Janine. God, as we say these names, open up our hearts that they might be received and Lord, let them know that they are not alone. Finally, O oh Lord, we ask that you plant a seed in our hearts today that we might go from this place this week making the world look a little bit more like the world that you envision in all the things that we do. We pray this all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. One of the things that I love about um, Laura is that she gives us new ways and exciting ways to think and to experience worship. And um, as you saw, she is including some different uh, musicians with her this week. And so um, she's provided a, um, an opportunity for us to share in um, some more music this morning. So. But she has made some beautiful stuff. This one, actually, this is the one, I think, with Cindy. So uh, we'll uh, enjoy this special music this morning. Thank you so much, Cindy and Laura. Really appreciate your gifts. So as we come to this time and our children's moment, I need you to gather the bag that we sent out this week and uh, get your stuff ready. And the, uh, what we sent out this week are some 
seeds. Maybe you got them in the mail. And if you look at them, I've got some right here. Now, I don't know, I should have thought about this. Can you see what I got? It's a tiny, tiny little seed. It's called a mustard seed. And if you grind it up, you might eat this on your hamburger or on your hot dog, but um, it is something that grows in the garden. What I've given you is in there is a little chalice cup. These are the cups that we use for communion at our, um, at our service outside each Sunday morning. And when they come, they actually have a little cover over them. And so you've got the bread down here and the juice is here. So what I did this week is I cleaned those out so they're clean. And um, so you can put some dirt in there. You just kind of pack it down in there. And then you take a seed or two and you put it in there and you pack it down, okay? You put it underneath there and then just give it a little bit of water, just a tiny bit of water for a little while. And you should be able to watch the plant grow. And then it, once it gets a little bit bigger, you'll have to move it to a bigger pot, okay? So it won't be able to grow there for long, but you can kind of see it grow because one of the things that I find interesting is this summer, we planted a garden in our backyard. And we planted um, zucchini, we've planted basil, tomatoes, cayenne peppers, um, okra, and we planted sweet potatoes. Now, I don't know if you know how a sweet potato works, um, but potatoes actually grow underneath the ground. So you, I put the seeds in the ground, and I patted it down and got it all ready, and I watered it in my garden, and, it, and, and then all of a sudden, green stuff popped up and I was like hey it looks like it's going well you know but the thing is you don't know how the potatoes are doing under the ground because you they're in the dirt so we had I mean the the, um, the runners on the sweet potatoes they grew up and they grew everywhere I mean they were going all over our raised bed garden I mean, just all over the place and um we watched it but I was like what's gonna happen one day I went out there, and right by my sweet potatoes, a mama bunny had dug down into there and put her baby bunnies right next to my sweet potato plants. I was like, well, what am I supposed to do? You can't move the baby bunnies. So we had to wait till the baby bunnies got big enough. They hopped off. They, before they left, um, I think they ate every single leaf on the sweet potato plant. But after that was the case, I packed down the dirt right next to the sweet potato plant, but I was like, what's going to happen? It ate all of the, you know, the leaves off of the, the sweet potato. I was like, is this going to cause a problem? Well, the leaves grew back. More runners popped up. They went all over the place. They even started to climb up the tomatoes. It was crazy. Well, one of the, the people that I trust as a gardener, I said, well, what do I do about sweet potatoes? They said, well, like, when it comes to the end of September, you go out, and you trim off all the green and you go and you dig up the sweet potatoes. So I was like, well, I don't even know what I'm gonna find. I mean, what's gonna be there? And so Beckett and I went out one evening this week and um, we were, he was pulling off tomatoes left and right off the tomato plant. And, uh, and uh, so let's start kind of digging. And so he and I kind of started to move around the dirt around and, all, and sure enough, underneath there, as we dug, dug down in there, a sweet potato. And then we dug a little bit more and there was another one. A little bit more and a little bit more. And over here is another and another and another. And then all of a sudden, as I was pulling out all of the, the runners, one runner was kind of caught. And so I pulled that a little bit more and something started moving under the ground. So I went over there and I dug a little bit. Three more sweet potatoes. So this week we harvested See if I can pull this up. All of those sweet potatoes, plus two more that we gave to our neighbor next door. Those 
all grew underneath the ground all summer, and I didn't know what was happening. I was wondering, I was sitting there thinking, I, I hope, I hope that those sweet potatoes are doing what they're supposed to do, but I really didn't know. Sometimes when you plant a seed, you don't always know exactly what's going to come up. But the beautiful thing is, is that we can tend to these things, these seeds, and great things can happen. So if you guys want to, you know, like I said, keep an eye on these seeds, plant them in your little thing, and then move them to a bigger plant, or you can put them outside by your house, and they'll pop up. And um, you'll find out in the sermon today a little bit more about what comes about when you plant mustard seeds. So I, it's not like you're going to grow it up and then all of a sudden you're going to have like a hot dog and a bun and you're just, I mean, you're actually going to have to work with that mustard. But uh, we'll see what pops up from the things that you plant. Hey, and if you planted something this summer, if you all had a garden in your home, send me a picture this week, okay? Send me a, a, a shot of something that you grew this week, this this year, because um, I'd love to use it, okay? Let's, uh, let's pray. God, we're so grateful for our young people, for the ways that they make a difference, for the things that they plant in this world. We're grateful for the seeds. We're thankful for the gardens, and we're thankful for the harvest. Bless and keep these young people, especially those that will be heading back to school this next week. Be with them. Keep them safe and always encourage them in their pursuit of learning. Bless and keep us all. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, I'm going to invite um, Jean to unmute her microphone and to share our scripture for the morning, please. The scripture today is from Mark 4. 30 to 32. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? It's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Thank you so much, Jean. So we continue this week in our study of the parables of Jesus the short stories that he told throughout his ministry. As I've shared with you over this time, parables are stories that are rooted in their time and yet have meanings that engage on many different levels. The story today is one that is short but it is definitely one that engages us in a lot of different ways. Like I said, you know, I think that was something that came about it early on in the pandemic is that there was a lot of backyard gardens that were started this year. Because I mean, you remember a long time ago when this whole thing started, we were, you know, at home. And we're like, well, what can we do? Well, immediately all the bikes sold out so that people could ride around. And we know that um, puzzles sold out like almost immediately. And then they started saying, hey, if you're outside, things are a lot safer. And we said, hey, why don't we start things, a garden out in the backyard? And like I said to the kids in the children's moment today, that's one of the things that we did. We built a raised bed garden. So in some ways, this text today seems very timely. I could have preached this sermon maybe in my backyard right next to my raised bed garden. And I could have shown you how still the okra is growing in my garden and now is over six feet tall. 
And the more I harvest it, it seems like the more I get. Maybe you could tell me of what you grew this year in your garden. Maybe you could share something new that you planted, like my dad did with the, uh, the spinach that he's planting. Maybe you put in a new kind of tomato this year and it tasted terrific. Or maybe, maybe you planted some beautiful flowers along the outside of your yard so as the people walked by, they were able to experience some beauty. But I don't know. There's really something cool about being able to take that seed and to put it in the ground, cover it up, and water it, and tend to it, and weed around it, and take care of it. So I don't know where this story was preached. I don't know. It's, fa it's fascinating. This story is found in four different gospels. It's found in Mark. It's found in Matthew. It's found in Luke. And it's even found in the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. Four different stories of Jesus telling a parable of a mustard seed. Now, what's fascinating about this is that I could have had Jean read all of the different texts from the different Gospels, but each one of them tells the story in a little bit of a different manner. Each one of them tells of the mustard seed, a very, very tiny seed, and how it is placed in the ground, and how when it grows up, it then becomes something. What it becomes is actually something that's very interesting. In Mark's gospel right here, it shared that this seed grows up into, and the text translates it as shrub, sometimes as tree. But this one, the actual text is that it's, um, the actual text that it translates is lexanon, which translates as vegetable. That this seed grows into a vegetable. And in those ve that vegetable, in the strong, big branches, um, the birds come and sit and find shelter. Now, in other texts, they actually change it a little bit more. It doesn't, it doesn't just grow from a, um, from a seed to a shrub or vegetable, but it also it, it's been said to be grown into a tree, a tree so large that many birds can come and sit in its branches. I did some work and looked at it this week. There are a couple of different forms of the mustard plant. All of them, primarily, most all of them, grow to be about a foot high, and they look very much like a weed. There are some that grow a little bit higher, but none of which look like a tree or a bush. It's fascinating to get this. So we have to recognize that when Jesus tells this story, we recognize that Jesus is inviting us in to think in a deeper manner about this story. And as we have found out over the last few weeks, we recognize that whenever Jesus tells a story, it's going to, it's going to engage us in a lot of different ways, depending on where we are in our lives. And also, he's going to engage us in a way that it should challenge us in some way. This should get us thinking. Just as any good lesson from a teacher should, it should reach out, get the learner to be thinking, and then to place it in their own lives in some way. Because the mustard seed itself is not just a weed. And it's not really a vegetable either. 
The mustard plant had a couple of different uses. First off, the seeds can be harvested and ground into a spice that can then be put on food, and it makes things a whole lot more tasty. It's all, we're also told that back then that mustard seeds grew the plants, and then they took the, the leaves off of the plants and used those for medicinal purposes for healing. We're also told that those mustard seeds were planted on the outside of many gardens to grow up and to provide beauty and aesthetic as well for people's gardens back in those times. A singular plant with many different purposes. There's, and the thing is, is that you've heard maybe, um, you maybe heard that if I had faith as a mustard seed, because Jesus used this mustard seed analogy other times in his ministry. Because there is something to be said about when you have something very tiny, how it can be powerful. And so that story on down, it's not involved in this one. And with this one, he's using the mustard seed to talk about the kingdom of God. But on down the road, another time, Jesus talks about the tininess of the mustard seed and about how if our faith is even just that big, we can do great things with it. There was also another parable that was um, within the society of the time back in Jesus' day when he was teaching that told about mustard seeds as well. This was a power parable about emotional healing. The parable goes like this, that a, woman, the, a woman's child died, and she was very young. And so the mother took the child and, and wrapped the child in linens and then wrapped the child to herself and went to um, her friends and said, I must have my child back. Do you know of anything that I can do? To bring her back to life. And the parable goes that she is directed up the high mountain to a great, great man up there that could possibly help her. And so she climbs the mountain and finds this holy man up there. And she says, you must help me. I want my daughter back. Can you help me? Can you bring her back to life? And, and the holy man says, there is something that I can do, but I need a potion and I need mustard seeds for that. And so he says, but these mustard seeds must be special. They must have been grown in a home that has never known pain or sorrow. And so the woman comes back down the hill and she goes from house to house to house looking for mustard seeds from a home that has not known pain or sorrow. But the problem is, from each house that she goes to, she hears the story of the people and the pain and the sorrow that they have dealt with. And she cannot find a place that grief has not touched. And so she finally comes to peace and is able to bury her daughter. All kinds of parables around a mustard seed an invitation to think about what this tiny little seed can do. It's amazing what happens when you plant a seed. The mustard seed is not the very tiniest of seeds. An orchid seed is smaller than a mustard seed. And still, when you look at the tininess of that seed, it is amazing to think of what will come from that. I mean, to tell the truth, any seed that we plant is really amazing to see what happens when we put it under the earth when we pack it down, when we water it and give it sunlight, 
and give it the nutrients from the ground. It is amazing to see what comes forth from that. Isn't that what life is like? The thing about this is I think about the times that seeds have been planted in this world. Sometimes that's a calling that comes deep in our own hearts that is planted. It's a word, it's a story, it's something that we see that moves us and changes us deep inside of who we are. And when we open ourselves up to that seed that is planted inside of us, great things can happen. I don't know about you, but lately, I definitely have been struggling as I look around to see, to see the positiveness of this world. I want to have hope. And I see myself as, a, as pretty much a, a, an optimistic kind of person. I feel like that I have hope deep inside of me. And yet, the, the more that I look around in our world, the more I wonder what is happening. I was with some colleagues this last week, and I lamented, and I got frustrated, because I wondered if anything is happening. Is it the same with you? And the story kept coming back to me. That to experience the growth that needs to happen, we must plant the seed. We must put it into the ground. We must care for it and tend to it. But the seed must die to its existence as to what it is, just a seed, to become the plant that it needs to be. I have to admit, I get impatient in the garden. I've got some seeds right now that are growing these little kale seeds, and I'm ready to put the kale in my smoothie. But those, they just keep growing, but they're just coming up a little bit at a time. And I want to make sure that the roots are deep enough. I want to make sure that it's getting everything that it needs. I want to dig around. I want to poke at it. I want it to happen faster. But I'm reminded, I'm reminded that growth takes time. I don't know if, I mean, my guess is Jesus knew exactly what he was saying and that mustard seeds he knew don't grow into trees with big branches that birds can come and sit on. What Jesus was giving us an opportunity to do is to wonder, to wonder what can happen with a tiny little seed that's planted. During the, this difficult time, especially with race relations within our country, I have tried to, to step back and to listen. And one of the ways that I've tried to do that is through the media and through a movie that was recommended to me called Just Mercy. And if you haven't had a chance to, to see this movie, I recommend it. And it talks about Brian Stevenson, someone who had a dream and had a, a calling deep inside of himself to be there for those that were forgotten. And he planted a seed a planted a seed of equal justice initiative. And what he did and what he continues to do today 
is to nurture that seed. And it has grown into something that has been healing for people. And it has taught him as well. What is that seed that needs to be planted inside of you today? What is that seed of hope that needs to be tended to? Sometimes we plant the seed thinking it will sprout into something. But the reality is, is that when we are open to allowing God to nurture that seed within us, we have no clue how it will develop. The reminder of the mustard seed is that when it comes out, when, when whatever it is that is planted inside of us emerges, it will bring spice to life. It will bring flavor to our world. It will also bring healing if it is planted and if it is tended in the right way. It will bring healing to the world as well, to our community, to our nation, to our world. And it will be beautiful if it comes from God. But who knows? You may think it's only going to grow to one foot tall. But that seed that is planted in you could become a vegetable or a shrub, or a tree, a tree big enough that all the birds in the world can come and find shelter within it. I do have hope. And I know that there are more seeds out there. And I know that your life is fertile ground. I cannot wait, cannot wait to see what spicy, healing, beautiful plant grows from you. And the change will happen one person at a time. Amen. Our offering is a part of who we are. I am grateful for the offerings that I've received this summer from the garden that was planted. And like I said, one of the things that I did immediately after coming and gathering all the sweet potatoes is I took two of them and I gave them to my neighbor. Because it's important that we share of the gifts that we have been given. How will you share of what you have been given? For all things come from God. And our offering is a way of sharing that and giving that back to God, but sharing it with the world. I hope that you will Find a way of sharing your gifts and tithes and offerings with the church and also in all kinds of different ways this coming week. So you can stop by the church and or stop by the church's website and, and, and share there. You can mail a gift or you can bring in food if you need to and share that with our community. Your offerings make a difference here at Pond and in this world. I invite you to think about how you're going to give as we hear another offering from Laura.
At this time, I would invite you to find your communion, to gather the bread and the cup that you have around your house, and to come to the table. This table feeds us. It feeds us on multiple levels. When we come to it each and every week, everyone is invited. Here at our church, we don't have any kind of fence that's here. We don't have any kind of, of checklist that you have to go through. We don't ask you questions as to whether or not you can come to this table. It's not our job to do that. It's not our role. It's not our table. It is Christ's table. And the invitation is given to all to come and to be fed. And yes, there is bread here and there is a cup, but it is so much more than that. This small meal, whether it is a, a piece of bread that is pulled out from a, um, from a communion set and the, the juice is there, it feeds us and nourishes us in ways that are so much larger. It prepares us for the week. It reminds us who we are and whose we are. And so, as we come to this table this week, no matter where you are, you are invited to remember the word that Jesus shared with his disciples when he was in that upper room and he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave the bread to each of them and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And later on in the meal, he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he poured it out. And he said, this cup, it's a new covenant. And it's poured out for each of you for the forgiveness of sin. And we come each and every week and we eat this bread and we drink this cup. But we do so remembering Jesus' life, his death, his resurrection, his ministry. Until we share it with him again. You are invited. I'm going to invite you at this time to pray. Gene, if you would lead us. You'll need to unmute yourself. Father God, as we gather today, far apart but yet so close, we ask your blessing on each of us. The symbols we take for this Holy Communion are different for each household but mean the same as we remember the Christ. May each of us show our love and concerns for others, even miles apart. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
Let us continue praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It has been good to be with you this week. Like I said, if you grew something this summer, I'd invite you to please um, snap a little picture of it on your phone or whatever. Text it to me. Email it to me. I would love to see that and love to put some stuff um, in the service this next week with that. Um, it is good to be together. So grateful for each and every one of you. As we finish up our worship this morning, um, we have one more musical number that, um, that Laura shared with us, and we'll allow that to be our benediction for the day. cartoonish effect. That is pretty cool. Go in peace, everyone. You all take care. Have a wonderful week. It is so good to see you. And take care of each other out there, all right? See you later. See you.